Awesome. So today I am here with Lauren, and Lauren is the Children's Minister at Georgetown Church of Christ. Really excited to chat today, Lauren. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm curious, what called you into ministry, and how did you, you know, find your current role at Georgetown Church of Christ? So um, I am actually a hairstylist turned oh, wow. Lauren's pastor. So um, I like that. I, this was not um, the career path that I thought I was going to be in. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought that. So I volunteered here for maybe five years, could have been a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, there was somebody in ministry here that saw potential in me as a leader. And um, it it's a really cool story. And I was hired on as part-time for two years. And then this January, I will hit three years full-time. So I have made a complete, you know, career change and it's been one of the best decisions I've ever said yes to. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is spectacular to hear Lauren. And uh, yeah, well, that is a uh, interesting career path because you hear about a lot of like educators getting into kids and men or you know uh, people that were involved in the church you know to begin with and that was the plan so you know given uh your entry from you know kind of like as a hairstylist how uh -huh. does that change how you recruit uh, volunteers and people for ministry from you know backgrounds that uh are less typical per se yeah so I don't know. I think that with my story, it goes to show that anybody can do this. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I like to say is, hey, I didn't go to school for this. Um, I just, you know, found a place to serve and it gave me a place to belong. So recruiting people all over. I mean, I have um, law enforcement, I have doctors, I have high school students. So um, this job or, or really serving in the volunteer role is really for everyone. There is something for everyone. Absolutely. Could not agree more. And, you know, obviously recruiting volunteers is a constant goal in ministry, especially in kids ministry. What are some uh, tips you have and strategies that work well for you for recruiting folks to serve. So um, I I will start a new quarter this uh, this Sunday actually in December, and I have I am glad to say that I have a teen a student or a young adult serving in every area, and that's been a short term goal. And I literally jumped up and down today to tell my coworkers that one of my final students texted me and said I'm in, and um, so I think just being open and honest with them and inviting them to be part of the mission that, um, hey, there's a kid um, here that might need you, you know, be someone that you wish that you had had. And, and that's really why I got started um, probably serving. And so I think just letting them know that um, you have a unique opportunity to help build these foundation blocks of faith where these kids can create an authentic faith and walk alongside them. And it's a cool story to be part of. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, that, yeah, I guess, I mean, you know, letting them know, hey, you're not just you know, coming here for a couple hours on the yeah. weekend. This is a mm -hmm. you know, big picture. You are building a kid's relationship. With it. so it's not is, babysitting. That's the big no. deal. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Probably want to lead with that. Like, hey, yes. this is not babysitting. So, it's true. <laughs> when speaking of it not being babysitting, what are some tips you have for creating you know, uh, both engaging and exciting experiences in the kids and in the family ministry at your church. Yeah, so I'm all about a fun environment. I think that um, kids need to have fun. That's I've noticed that that's the one thing that um, when parents or caregivers pick up their kids, or even when I greet kids in the hallway, the first thing I say is, did you have fun? And I also want them to relate fun with Jesus, because I think Jesus mm -hmm. had fun. And so um, having environments that look like that they're for them is, is so important. And um, even us using Playlister, they love when I pick 
pick up my Apple TV remote and they know, like they know what's coming. And so I think even something down to that, it makes it fun and it has fun transitions. Um, you know, just as we go through our, our, um, our curriculum, we do follow the orange curriculum. So it makes it fun in itself. It sets me up to win, that's for sure. And um, yeah, overall, I think having the environment to be welcoming, but also having key leaders and small group leaders that know that fun is a priority. And mm -hmm. when those kids walk in the door, they are excited to see them. They remember something that they told them last week, or they comment on who we have lots of purses that come in with little bait, oh, little things like these. Like I've got it sitting here, stuff like that. Absolutely. So just always having a good time at small groups. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that is fantastic. And yeah, I agree. Jesus did have fun. So we <laughs> want to as well in ministry. And yeah, so, you know, we, we touched a bit on, you know, volunteer recruitment. What are some other, you know, short-term and then long-term goals uh, in your ministry? So a long-term goal for me is um, I would love to have a preschool pastor, which is really how I started. So whenever I was part-time, mm -hmm. I was a preschool pastor. So I really see a lot of value in handing over the keys and leadership um, mm -hmm. just to partner along with more people, just to reach more families. And um, that is, is a big one. And so that starts with, you know, giving someone a key and leadership when they're younger and then molding them like Play-Doh, you know, just to be prepared and have the correct tools to lead others. And so that is a, is a long-term goal. And um, I have, I have a great one going right now and I just cannot wait because I think the future looks so bright there and it's exciting. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you know, molding younger leaders is uh, really a great goal to have. And it's one, you know, most people don't usually actually mention, you know, they talk about, hey, our church has this big plan or, yeah, you know, I want to, you know, the kind of typical stuff lots of people focus on when it comes to mentoring uh, the next generation of leaders. What tips do you have to, you know, get investors that want to focus on that? Yeah, I think being open and honest um, is, is a big one and being in constant communication, but also not being afraid to let them um, have a seat at the table and, and to really share ideas and be part of the planning process. And that can be hard um, because you have to be vulnerable and <laughs> you have to be willing to let somebody come beside you. And I, I think that one of the greatest things that I've learned in that is being able to say, Hey, we didn't get this right the first time, but let's go back and let's try it again. And also communicating that to your families as well. And they tend to give a little bit more grace there. Um, <laughs> and that's, I mean, we just got to be open about it, but um, really not having them more like an intern, you know, they're not here to clean up or do the dirty work. They're here to do ministry beside me and beside us as a team. And so really allowing them to be part of a team. I absolutely could not agree more. You know, it's, hey, they're not here to get your coffee order, you know, no. they want, <laughs> and they are capable of doing great things. So give them yes. responsibility. And you will yes. be, uh, you know, you'll be impressed with the results. So. I agree. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, we've covered a lot of stuff so far, Lauren. I'm curious, what are, you know, just some other uh, pieces of advice and knowledge you'd want to share to family ministry leaders? Um, I would say, I say this a lot, heard this from a wise leader, don't come off the wall because we have important work to do. And like yesterday, it was a tough day. And I, we even came up as a team and, and somebody said, um, God didn't call us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. And mm -hmm. I've kind of been saying that over and over today. And, you know, whether it's 
dealing with tough situations with families or attendance is down or how to partner better with public schools. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of challenges, but I think just taking one piece at a time and working on it and and staying together as a team. You know, I just cannot stress enough how much my team means to me. I could cry just talking about it. But um, when we're when we do work together, it makes it makes work more enjoyable. And um, it also keeps the main thing the main thing and us focused on our mission, which is helping families and and yeah, just keep going, keep working hard. <laughs> Absolutely could not agree more. It is important to keep the main thing the main thing, especially mm -hmm. when there are so many other things that can distract us. So yeah. Uh, yeah, well, really appreciate the advice and thank you so much for sharing so much today, Lauren. Thank you. I so appreciate y'all. Absolutely.